Boink. Okay, now I'm recording. So I'm also going to record this, and uh, so you can watch it later if you you know forgot something or a little tip or something like that. So, Mom, take it away. Good morning, everybody. It's a lot of fun to see. I haven't done this before, so it's kind of exciting. Um, the dishes I chose after I chose the kedgeri, I was kind of second guessing myself about about it. But it's a flavor combination that is so unique and it's not hard or complicated because I don't have a lot of, it doesn't require a lot of technique, but I just wanted to share the recipe and introduce you to kind of a combination that's sort of retro. I'm sure that this, uh, I got this recipe way back in the 60s and I'm sure it was way before that. And it's sort of um, an English breakfast brunch and I thought we would, if you do do it, it's a good way to get to church and still have people at your house for brunch because you can make it and then refrigerate it, put it in the crock pot, go off to church and already have your fruit and everything ready and still have a nice lunch. I know it serves a lot. It's what I use for catering. And I really couldn't figure out how to cut it down. So I'm just making it, I'm just gonna share it with my neighbors. The first thing we're about the eggs, and I think I told you to keep them out. A, a coworker here at Capper, he heard me complaining about the eggs, and, not, and sometimes you do them the way they've told you to. You put them in cold water, you bring it up to a boil, you turn it off, set it off the back of the burner, let it sit for 12, 15 minutes, run cold water over it. They still sometimes don't peel. And then I would sometimes look for old eggs thinking that that membrane would be the secret to pulling it away. Well, this is everything. It just went right out the window. Steve here at Capper, he has retired since, gave me what he found on the internet, and it's nothing like you were taught or I was taught. I have a pan of water at a boil, and I'm going to drop the eggs at room temperature into the water. I have a soup ladle so they don't break, and we're going to then turn it down and cook them for 16 minutes. And I am really sure that this is gonna work or I wouldn't wanna do this in front of all of you. But I, I have high hope they're going to peel, peel beautifully. So I'm gonna step over here and put these in this water. So part of the key is leaving them out overnight, which felt really weird. When you first told me that mom, I was like, uh, are you trying to kill everybody off or? Well, I got a, I got a box and some of them were quite cracked, so I don't think we'll just have to go with it. Ron, we'll just make the best of it, guys. <laughs> I used to check the box at the grocery store before I take it home, but um, like I said, we're just going to make the best of it. Then after I get these in, we'll put the primer on, and then we're going to start on the, the dressing. Salad. Can you all hear her okay when she's talking? Yeah? Good. Okay, I'm going to set the timer now. And turn this down so it's just simmering. So bring the water to a boil. Put them in and then turn it down to simmering for 16 minutes. And now I'm going to start on the dressing for our uh, fruit salad. It's, um, let's see, first I'm going to do our, our lime. And you know the trick, if it's, if it's kind of um, not real soft and giving, you can throw it in the microwave for about 15 seconds and that, that um, yields more juice. But this one's pretty soft. And the other thing, a lot of times when you're using the zest, so many times a recipe will have that. So you need to zest it before you cut into it and juice it. Or it's kind of, uh, kind of hard to mess with if you don't. So I just have one line here, and I'm going to zest it. And I use the 
it had some herbs and I knew my men would be coming up at my house. So when Kelly got there this morning, we went out in the backyard and it was up. I did buy a little at the grocery store just in case my, I hadn't gone out to my backyard for a long time, but we got a little. And the other thing is I couldn't find a lot of basil. So the recipe actually calls for two tablespoons, but I don't think I'll have quite two tablespoons. But once again, it's just a fruit salad and we will just use what we have. In fact, you you said the original recipe even called for mango, it and is. it's not really I'm in season. Yeah, and I don't think I have to make things work. And I, I, I the new strawberries were, were um, pretty available around Easter. And um, get my juice in here. I remember watching the Cooking Channel, and Tracy Yearwood had one of these, and a writer, a viewer called in. I told her she was using it wrong because she had it like this. And so you turn it upside down. Quite, quite a nice little gadget. I like it a lot. And you get a lot of juice out. Oh, good. And I'll do the other one. And then I'm going to measure my honey. And I have a little, um, I have a garbage bowl here, like Rachel Ray. And um, I'm going to get some spray and spray my, and then the honey will come out better that way. Oh my gosh, that's a good idea. So you put like, like a Pam or something in the, yeah is the store brand yeah Doesn't but you put that in the teaspoon before you put the honey in uh-huh that's such a good idea Bloop. so are, just out of curiosity are we just we're zesting the lime and then squeezing it in because i missed that part yes that's what we did we zested the lime that's going to be our dressing for our fruit. and do we do both of them i just bought this in case it called for for two tablespoons, and um, I think I got my two tablespoons. You know, sometimes you'll have a, some fruit that doesn't yield a lot of juice, so I just always have a backup. And now I'm going to work on my fresh herbs. I'll set this. And how much honey was it? Pardon? How much honey? A uh, two tablespoons. Thank you. Now I've got my basil. In the summer, we won't, I mean, most, a lot of people have it in their garden. And, um, but this was the best I could do. But I do like a combination of mint and basil. And I'm going to call Stephanod. You just kind of stack these leaves up and then roll them up like a little cigar and then just chiffonade. I'll put that in our dressing. And I'm going to do the same thing with the mint. Now this came from the garden today. What did you call that? Chiffonade. It's just a, a culinary thing. Fancy. A fancy for, for, for uh, cutting it in strips or ribbons. This is really baby. My hand feels so good this morning out in the backyard. Try to throw the word chiffonade in a in polite your... conversation to sound <laughs> smart. I don't think I need the store bot. Now this is so tiny. I'll just keep gathering it together and um, just and let's see, do a little bit more. 
Oh, it smells good. Oh, doesn't it smell good? Do any of you have some mint in your in your yard? It does grow. It like it. Yeah. <laughs> I have it in pots. Oh, that's a good idea. Then you can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you can contain it. Now I'm going to get this in here, and then we're going to stir it on the fruit. And I think I'll stir it on my honeydew first. Now I know on the cooking channel they usually cut this off, cut this off, and they set it up like that, and then they go around like that. Well, I don't like to do it like that. I had my own way long before the cooking channel came on. And I need to get a spoon. Maybe I've got one over here. Get my garbage bowl and get these seeds out. That one done. Now this one. And then I'll show you my way to do it. And we'll just drop them right in here. Let's see, I want to make sure you can see. So I'll finish, finish up our honeydew. This one looks like a pretty good honeydew. Yeah, for this time. Yeah. Here. This is how you do most melons, right? Um, it's the way I do it. Pineapple. Too. And my pineapple will be, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's similar to that too. Uh -huh. Eventually, what lands on the board, I'll just scoot in my bowl. I need to ask a question. How much of the bay? How much of the basil and the um, mint and, did you use? Well, Just, it called for a tablespoon of basil. I don't think I had a tablespoon, so I just made do. I didn't really measure, but it called. Oh, okay. And, I was um, going to use way too it, much. Huh? I was going to use a bunch, huge amount. No. Okay. <laughs> Good that you asked. Have to empty my garbage bowl here pretty soon. Melon makes a, a big mess and kind of a heavy mess. Yeah. And I have learned over the years sometimes it's easier to keep all that rind in one place because sometimes the bags will break. It gets too heavy with watermelon. Yeah. And just to keep it all and carry it out by itself and you don't have that mess. You guys might not know this, but at St. Thomas, we actually have a compost pile. Uh, it's out back. You are welcome to add to it at any time. It was a giving project that was started last year with our garden. It's right next to the garden by the weeping willow in the back. And I'm going to dump this and have room for my pineapple. Right. 
I got the top off and the bottom. And this is where they do it. But at my hands just aren't that, I, I, I don't know, I just never found that comfortable. And cut the core out. Riley and I argue about that all the time. She leaves the core in. It's too hard, too crunchy. It's kind of crunchy. <laughs> This is in there. Kelly, what does it say on the timer for our egg? I will check it and see. Let's see what it says. Oh, I've got it right here. It says, oh, three minutes. Okay, perfect. And I sure hope it doesn't prove me wrong. I've been wrong about a year now, and I've been very happy with the result. I know it's a giant thing, and it's close out in brown. Explain it. You all can see him on the cooking channel, but I think it has something to do with the room temperature and that membrane next to the shell. It, it's, it's like I said, I do think it's a science, science thing, but it seems to work. If I can't get this done before my buzzer rings. I have some uh, Easter food trivia while we're while she's cooking that I'm going to throw in every once in a while. See if anybody knows the answer. I have a quick question so, first. <laughs> Can I ask a quick <laughs> question first? Yes. Okay. So we did the mint and the basil, right? Uh -huh. Both went in? Okay. The lime and the lime zest and the honey. And how much honey was it? A tablespoon? A tablespoon. A tablespoon. Two, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. Hi, Jancy. That's my cousin Jancy with that amazing background that I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. It's really good to see you, Cousin Jancy. A little tiny thing that I blew up. Thanks. Great to be here. This is so much fun. So everybody, Just, that's my Cousin Jancy. She's this really cool artist who lives here in Topeka, and she does amazing things, and I love that she's here. Hi, Jancy. <laughs> hey, Carol. Hey, yeah. Welcome, welcome for a little brunch. I'm so excited. Good. We're just waiting on the timer now. We have these eggs that we, I told everyone to leave out at room temperature overnight. Yes. But it, 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 there we go. So yeah. We'll nice. About a, a minute and 30 seconds. So that's cold water on. Now I have access to some ice. You don't need to do that at home. I've done it at my house and just poured cold water on it and they worked. But because I can handle them better here, and if Kelly helps me peel a little bit, um, we can uh, get them peeled quicker that way. I still have a minute, so I'm gonna drain this other can of salmon. I have drained two. And um, I have been pulling out some of the bone and a little bit of that thing that it wouldn't hurt you to eat it, of course, but it's kind of a slightly. And then open, make sure you, and once again, these bones wouldn't hurt you, but I like to just take them out. Question on the salmon. Pardon? Yes. How much salmon? Because I got three of the little cans. It looks like you've got big cans. I did. We have not done this before, so just bear with me. <laughs> I sure. haven't done anything like this, so maybe and we get to do it again, I'll be able to explain things a little better. That's the way to do this. Now I have all my salmon in here, and my timer is going off. So I need to rinse my hands real quick. 
Okay, I missed something too. So you mix the you mix the lime zest and the honey and the basil and mint together, and yeah. then pour and then you'll pour that over the melons later. And pour it over. Is I that right, or do you put it all together? In the same bowl. And I'm going to walk this over to the sink now, and it, this hot water off and this cold water on. So. Let's see. So you didn't pour it over, you just put them all in the same. They just went in the same bowl, Mary Beth. Oh, okay. The All the liquid and the basil and stuff is on the bottom. So it's just- Okay. But you could pour it over it too. Probably. I'm guessing she has some tip or trick that she's gonna get to when, when okay. we finish this up. You can set that aside. Kelly, would yeah. you give me a scoop of ice? Yes. Right in there. Wonderful. Now I've got my salmon. I showed you that. And I'm going to break it up just a little bit. I like nice large chunks so you can know what you're eating. Oh, this is so pretty. I splurged and got the expensive. It was a little over $10 a can. But keeping in mind, you can feed 15 people and for, um, for the pr protein, that's not a lot of money. That's true. If you were doing a, if you're doing a party, a lamb or something. Yeah. <laughs> Even ham or yeah. Ham. With just the two of us, we divided the recipe in thirds and it works out. It's a very simple math problem with one. Well, I don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have people for that. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, this is oh, looking good. We have a question. You drain, did you drain the sand? Oh yes. It's yes. all drained. It, including here, I'll show you. It's drained, and also I took some of the, some of the, um, what did you think it, huh? the skin and some of the bones, and there's a lot of liquid in there. Yeah. So not just like with the can drain like you do, but actually squish it out in a strainer. I've got some nice big hunks here. So I'm going to wash my hands again, and then we'll get started on peeling these eggs. <laughs> oh, be careful. There's a little nose wrinkling here of a little black cat, and I know what she's smelling. <laughs> she's smelling that salmon. Make sure you rinse that can out. Debbie, I would say yes. Use what you have. Uh, that's, that's always mom's philosophy is you just go with what you've got. Okay, the eggs are cool enough. Kelly, you have to come and look at this. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I get so excited, every, pull that apart. Every time it works. Woo, oh my gosh. It just like renews itself. There's nothing. I know. Oh man, Isn't that cool? Slick. I'm going to put these on a towel. To dry a little bit but we'll just keep oh I it's fun to do isn't it quick. they just come so quick see how they are just, it just they're just easy right out, it doesn't tear it just doesn't tear or anything wow how could one person get so excited about <laughs> peeling an egg <laughs> but i am because <laughs> i've had years of struggling when you want to make, now if you want to do potato salad, but if you want to do deviled eggs and then you have all these eggs that you're just standing there almost ready to cry, which I think <laughs> I probably have a time or two. Oh, these are just beautiful. 
So it doesn't matter if the eggs are, because I know you used to want to try to get older. Well, eggs, that's what I was looking really for. I, I did. I knew there was an answer out there, but I didn't know the. I now didn't know the answer. Found the answer. And all these years, I did wait a long time. <laughs> <laughs> all the heartbreak that has saved me. Oh do, do fresh eggs have to be refrigerated? Like, if you got them straight from the chicken. I, that's something I probably shouldn't discuss because I'm not a home economist, but I just know that I'm old enough to know that growing up and grandmas and would go get, get eggs and bring them in and they, they stayed out on the counter until they were cooked. But I'm sure with, um, I mean, I wouldn't advise that, uh, <laughs> but I, I know that every family had their, um, unique way of handling all that. But nowadays we're just taught to, when I was catering, something could set out for two hours and it neither needed to be reheated, refrigerated, and if you didn't, weren't going to use it, thrown away. So. Uh, I think people could do a little research on it, but I recall from friends of mine that if they're fresh eggs, that they, I don't know that they have to go in the refrigerator, especially if they're used fairly in a couple of days. But something about the process of the eggs that are sold in the grocery store makes it so they have to be refrigerated. Like that's another one of those science things. It's kind of like a math thing. I don't, um, <laughs> I don't handle that well. This go in your trash here. They do. I'm getting ready to melt my butter, and I've got real butter in my electric skillet. It sounds like a lot, but it's a lot of rice and eggs and fish. It's two sticks. And I'm going to get that melted while I chop these eggs up to put in the salmon. Um, you guys were talking about eggs, and Josh's sister lived in England for what four years. Yeah. And I've just heard from different people that in Europe it's a very common. They think it's strange that we even refrigerate our eggs at all, that they commonly leave their eggs out. Yeah, I have heard that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, I always keep my butter out. I like it at room temperature. Now, yeah, now I, I'm just a single person, but I would only keep a half a stick. And in a couple, three days, I use it. So some of these things that... Um, I, yeah, I leave salt, yeah, salt so, and butter out, definitely. Yeah, and I just that. like to have it on the counter. It's so nice to put on a, a bagel or English muffin. So um, <laughs> You used to have a butter bell, too. Yes, a butter you, bell. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to slice these up. Better. I think I'll flip my cutting board so we don't get it in the shell. How much butter are we putting into the frying pan? I know it's a lot. Two sticks. Another two sticks. Two sticks. Okay. My board doesn't slide around. I keep a, um, a dishcloth so that it stays here. Otherwise, your board moves around. And now it's nice and sturdy. And I'm just coarsely chopping them. And you can see there's no green ring. They're just nice, bright yellow. Oh, we have a question. Good. If you cook fewer eggs, does the simmer time change? No. So one egg or 24 eggs, it's the same. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh, Kelly, you've got to come in here. <laughs> yeah, two -thirds, the recipe is one third of a cup of butter. There you go. See how bright yellow that is? Yeah. No green tinge. Or a stick of butter. <laughs> I'll let you guys work in the mail. <laughs> I'll just take the whole recipe and share it. You can do all the composition for us. Isn't it pretty, Kelly? I just get so excited. And it make beautiful deviled eggs. Oh, yeah. She's using a cup of butter, which is two sticks of butter. Two sticks of butter. Well, it would be a third, but that's two thirds of one stick. 
Oh, I'm getting a, a brain freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Out of my element. I saw a, a meme on Facebook. Somebody wanted people to talk about name a name a book that makes that made you cry when you read it. And I said algebra book. <laughs> I come by it honestly. <laughs> I totally agree with you, Kelly. <laughs> now I um, here's a tool I really like a lot. It's a bench scraper. And I'm just, I've cut all these eggs up and I'm just going to scrape it. And I know it may be for baking a lot for people that work with dough, but it really works well. And sometimes if you have, I'll probably use it for the parsley, which I can do right now while I'm waiting for my butter to melt. Because we're going to garnish it with parsley. And I am going to use the entire bunch, almost a half a cup. And um, excuse me, I need to. Get tissue. Get tissue. <laughs> There's, uh, there, I don't have any. There's some right there, the napkin. Oh, yeah. There we go. Thank you. While we're waiting, do you use the white or the yolk of an egg? This is a little trivia. When you are making a meringue, the white or the yolk? White. The white. 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 What about an English custard? Yolk. 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 White. Yolk. Okay. Uh huh. I'm do this parsley now. Go for it. I saw on the cooking channel, and I love it. Instead of taking a huge piece and getting the the top of the parsley, I'm just going to take my blade and scrape it. And then you end you end with all of it. But then there are sometimes a few, but it's. It's not as daunting as doing the whole thing because there's nothing wrong with the skins. That's genius. And now I'm going to put it in a bundle and give it a nice top. Mm -hmm. This is fun. I'm seeing some of these. Just it, just so easy. <laughs> I have to go, like, I'll go through and do it, and then I've got to bunch it up and back again, and then a third, and a first time. <laughs> and then I'll run my bag this way. Oh, the smell. Isn't that wonderful? That is a spring time smell. It is so pretty. Okay, guys, my butter is melting. I gotta move the camera now. And I need to see um, how we add the curry powder. And the reason we're adding it now, I need to get the right spoon to stir. It'll um, open it up and it'll bloom. And we're gonna cook it for a couple minutes. I can't hear if you're talking. That was something I learned about in Indian cooking, how they always cook their spices first to make them bloom. So like even Italian cooking, you should bloom your spices first, do you well, believe? Well, I don't know that I use it as much because the Indian have so many um yeah. so many spices. I can't think it would hurt if you were making them. Um, oh man, that smell is what I'm looking for. I know. That cr oh my gosh, it just like it messes with my brain, curry does. It, it makes me happy and, oh my gosh. I'm gonna put the timer on. How much do we put in? It's two, the curry powder, right? Two tablespoons of curry. Two tablespoons of curry. It is magic. <laughs> yeah, it is. And now it's 
simmering and blooming, blooming, blooming in butter. butter. I bet, I bet other like uh, Middle Eastern cooking, I bet they bloom their spices. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think, Asian cooking, I don't know if they would do that. It's a little different. It's a lot better. Yeah, it really is. But the first I heard of it was in Indian cooking. Did you have another egg question? Oh, yes. Let me get back over there. Okay. I love cooking. <laughs> Let's see. Um, hollandaise sauce, white or yolk? Yolk. 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 That'll be yolk, I think. Yolk. Some of these will be the, the whole egg, too. Is that right, Mom? Yep. Yep. Um, a souffle. Oh. oh. The whole the boodle is to play. The whole egg? Oh, yeah. Separate. Sep I think separated, though. I think. I think. Oh, okay. Separate? Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. A creme brulee. Oh, golly. Um, I'm going to say yolk. Yeah. I should know this one. Is that right, Mom? Yes. My favorite dessert. Royal icing. That's just the white. Okay, my timer went off. I'm going to add all this mix to that butter. Eggs do you use inside the all 12 of them? Do you chop up all 12 to use with the salmon? Pardon? Do you chop up all 12 eggs to use with the salmon? I did, but I didn't chop up 12 because I had two that were broken in the carton and I couldn't get them out. So I just left them there and we have uh, 10 eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why a little bit of salmon, <laughs> Debbie, you just go with what you've got. You just have to. Oh. It's not wrong science. It's a good, it's your next meal. Josh Lyman says he, he can smell it now. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty fabulous. Okay, let's see. The oh my gosh, that smells good. We do is um, <clears throat> and then uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we're going to add the rice now. I think I'll make the cream out. Now you all know, I'm sure you do, there is a difference between a liquid measuring cup and a dry measuring cup. These are liquid, and if you um, dry our... Why is that? You know? uh, the, well, it's a, it's, it's a science thing. It's, it's a math thing. But I just know it works. You just do what they say and use the liquid for liquid and dry for dry. And it calls for a cup and a half of heavy cream. And I'm going to get the rice in there now. So rice first. Yep. Your rice done? Yeah. Well. That didn't work. <laughs> we'll see if I can. How much rice is that? <laughs> um, it was two cups dry. Four cups of water. Yes. Makes a big pot of food, guys. <laughs> Kelly will probably be eating on it all in the next week. Sweet. <laughs> But I don't think Kelly will mind. I won't mind a bit. And it'll, when you heat it up in the microwave at work, it kind of um, raises a few eyebrows in the building. Between <laughs> curry and fish. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes rice doesn't reheat very well. Is there a, something, you, you know, like it'll, if you reheat, I don't know, like take out rice. Well, you it's might crunchy. add a of water before you heat it up. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to turn this down to warm now. I have a lot of food to incorporate here. 
but the cream's going to pull it all together. And if you uh, did this, like you said, and then refrigerate it, and then you want to put it in a crock pot to reheat, would you want to add more moisture to reheat, do you think? You know, it's, I hate to answer that because I haven't done it for a long time. I did it in my catering days, uh -huh. and I'm sure I had a technique. So it might, you know, not hurt. But you might need to use a little bit of that extra cream okay keep it and then um but once again it's one of these forgiving dishes that is not going to get real upset if you add a little more liquid or another egg or i need to add some salt and pepper And let me get the salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. <laughs> Have you got some kosher salt here? And you I'll just, I, I am. Gotta make it rain. Same way with a little pepper. And then our parsley. Let me get this little area cleaned up a little bit. All the parsley, just really fresh. I'll get our fruit salad. So let me get that done. If you have any more questions, I'll watch them from here and let them uh, drain on a on a towel. How much curry was it, Mom? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Let's see, I've got my little knife here. <laughs> Camera on a dolly, like a professional. It's not on a, oh, you know, kitchen cart at all. <laughs> <laughs> that out of the way. <laughs> We're done. Oh, you made it. I'm impressed. It's wonderful. That's awesome. How's it taste? One third of everything works fine. Good. Doesn't it smell amazing? Yeah. Okay, here's another trivia question. What is what do you call it when you Add alcoholic liqueur to a hot pan and ignite it, swiftly in introducing the rich flavor of the spirit to the food. What do you call that? Bombay. Bombay. Um, I call it a house fire because they always tell you never. <laughs> Bombay. Don't ever do that at home. Oh, the house fire. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see. What do you call making use of the residue in a pan often found after browning meat to flavor sauces and gravies, typically by adding liquid such as water, stock, or wine? Blazing. I have something to share. Yes. Those actual bits in the bottom of the pan have a real name. It's called fawn. And you know, most of us just call it, they're the good bits. The crunchy, the oh, where all the flavor is, but it actually does have a name. What is it? Bond. Fond. F. I think it's just F O N D. F O N D. Mm -hmm. Fond. Huh. So we are fond of fond in our yeah. in our sauces. We need good fond to make good 
Country gravy. That was taste very good. We'll have it for dinner. Very good. Dinner tonight. We have dinner. Yay. Except it's fish again, and it's just, <laughs> you know, we thought we were done with that last night. <laughs> I know. That was something else I thought about when I introduced, when I said I wanted to do this recipe. I thought, well, probably a lot of people have been having fish all through Lent, but mm -hmm. I, just forgive me, I wanted to share it because I think it's a lovely dish. <laughs> I'm I going to try to resurrect it. And now I've got the berries. And I'll get a spoon. And Kelly can put it in. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And there we go. And there you have it. Easter. Easter brunch. Well, I'm not. All right. What question? I have, I have a question. Can I ask? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we're going to reheat it tomorrow, should we save the parsley until we serve it? Yes. Yes. Good question. Excellent. What other questions do you have? <laughs> This has been a lot of fun, guys. Oh, no. I've had a good time. Thank you for letting me come into your kitchen. <laughs> and it's been a blast. I have another question. I'm going to come show you a picture, Mom, that I got texted. Okay. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you got my picture. It's some eggs, and they, they crack. Some of them cracked open. Yeah, they burst out of their shell, kind of, while we were boiling them. Um, <laughs> Maybe they were boiling a little bit too aggressively. Once it comes to a boil, turn it down. So it's just, you want the water moving, but not at a rapid boil. And um, just finish cooking them. They should be okay. Mm -hmm. You have a nasty pan. Uh, my head, mine broken too. There were several that were broken in the carton, but I didn't, I had to go with it, guys. I was here, we're cooking. So I just, <laughs> and it kind of made a mess, but. That's okay. They'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. I I have another question. Yes. <laughs> about the rice. So we need to, I didn't do the rice step. I missed that early on. Um, so we need to cook two cups of dry rice with following the directions. Yes. Um, and then just use that. Is there anything else special that we need to do to the rice? No, it, I didn't. A lot of times I cook rice in, um, bouillon to give it flavor but there's so much flavor in this dish i don't think you want to compete with it just cook it in water and i added i just followed the recipe on my package i used uncle ben's converted and amount of water and the amount of butter and just cooked it exactly that it like it said on the box it wasn't anything fancy no just did it michael we have you have that backdrop like Jancy's? Isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh! It's it's hers. She does. I knew. It makes me very happy to look at it. No, well, thank you. It was better than seeing my uh, bookshelf that's all stacked, all wacky, <laughs> and you know, stuff stacked up in the corners. Well, it, it's really beautiful. She's made this really wonderful coloring book. You know how they they have um, coloring books with mandalas and things like that. And Jancy's made this one that's the artwork. What's it called, Jancy? Um, energy artwork. And it's it's crazy colors. So like mandalas are like orderly, and that's part of the, you know their beauty. But hers is just wild, and you can see in the background. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Oh, thank you. More spirituality than Mondo's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little, Nancy, that, that, do, you do, any, do you any do do you any work with the North Topeka uh, Arts? 
with Noto? Uh huh. I have before. Yeah. Okay. Just wondering. I have a good friend who who uh, is part of big part of that. Who is that? Carol Bradbury. Oh yeah, I know Carol. Huh? Yeah, she's awesome. She made those neat flags that they uh, put up on the um, light poles that say Noto on them. Oh, they're great. She does all the silk work, kind of community silk work. That's neat. Get a group together and all painted. And then she takes the, what's left, you know, what, what they design. And then she puts it in her computer and makes it into something fabulous. It's mm, awesome. Wonderful. We, we have a special guest that just popped in from St. Louis University. My daughter, Carol's <laughs> granddaughter, Riley Jane. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, Hi Riley. <laughs> wow. How are you guys? Oh, my gosh. I'm having a blast. Good. What are you cooking? We made kajiri and uh, a nice fresh fruit salad with fresh mint and basil and lime and honey. And um, a kajiri, I'll let you look it up. Okay, I will. Yeah. Right there. There it is, Riley. Ooh. That looks yummy. Yeah. So yummy. So yummy. Curry and you can't go wrong with curry and rice. And salmon. Ooh, so wonderful. You know, Carol, I call you for all of my cooking advice. I'm so glad to get it all in one nutshell here. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I'm always calling her up. <laughs> love to share and it I you know sometimes I know the answer sometimes I don't but pretty much she always knows the answer I like I like talking about, <laughs> about food and I, I still love it after all these years Riley's had to get really creative and Riley you did a cooking thing like competition for cooking in dorms or something like that didn't you yeah they gave us all like microwavable food so it's like um like microwavable mashed potatoes or like cake in a mug or something like that and we had we had to like make all of them special or like do something to them and then we had like judges to judge all of them and so what, what did you do um I don't quite remember but the the cake that I made I remember was really good because we ended up making the cake but then accidentally undercooking it and then we didn't have time to like completely cook the rest so we just like rolled it into little excuse me into little cake balls yeah. and then like poured chocolate over it so I remember doing that I don't in in your dorm you have to like get very very creative so uh I've definitely been through many a exploding egg in my microwave but uh yeah Mira's on here too Riley I don't know if you saw her Mira in the, day, hey, yeah. in the days before dorm microwaves, we used to have to use popcorn poppers, the old kind with the pan. <laughs> and, and you could always tell when someone didn't time it right by the smell coming down the hall. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there was one guy who like made, tried to make microwavable uh, mac and cheese, but left it in for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and it set off the fire alarms so we had to evacuate but it was pretty funny i have a question about the salad yes i'm still doing it <laughs> anyway um do you use the lime juice for anything the I put, limes? yeah i zest it i use the zest and then i then I use the juice of one whole lime. Oh, juice of one whole lime. Okay, that's my question. Yep. Okay, great. And then the honey on top of that. Okay. And then I just put fruit on top Could of that. You... that toss it. Okay. What about any variations on this recipe? On the, oh my goodness, yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> because I didn't even follow the directions. It's out of one of my favorite books. I've always loved the Junior League cookbooks from Colorado, from Denver, because they really research these. I mean, they take uh, several years to publish one. And this is this is the book. And this is the 
but it called for a tablespoon of red pepper. Now, I was not going to buy one bell pepper to get one tablespoon, so I omitted that. I also called for sesame seeds. Now, a lot of us, sesame seeds are expensive. A lot of us, if you don't freeze it, they get rancid, and there's nothing worse than a rancid, either a peanut or nut, or it just, it's horrible. So I just left it out. I thought it, it wasn't all that necessary. It's just a little fruit salad. And goodness, you can add all kinds of things to it. I mean, you could probably roast almonds or add whatever fruit you wanted. It's just a starting pot to use some of your mint and your basil, a lime and honey. Okay, what about um, variations on the um, kedgeri? I think I'd stick with that kind of the way it is. I like the, I like the combination, and um, I, I guess I can't. My brain will get outside the box with the rice and the eggs. Someone asked about the pickled Thank you. Yes. Oh, wonderful. I love it. Okay. Let me look at my recipe then. I think it's called. I'm so glad you caught that. I think we forgot a recipe. It, it calls for a tablespoon. Cheryl, are you still on? Did she go? She said goodbye. <laughs> She's headed to the grocery store. <laughs> okay. I've got about that much. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the parsley. Because it really does add. I guess I'll move that over here. Yes, you're right. I should have had that in that lime juice, but this is pretty soft, so it'll break down in a in a little bit. And this is another product you probably won't use that much, and if you keep it in the freezer, it'll really keep for a long time. Because I don't know, I don't have many recipes that call for crystallized ginger, and this is and then I'm just going to put it in and give it a toss. Uh, ginger, when we were looking at what was available, ginger, crystallized ginger can be somewhat expensive. Very. Yeah. <laughs> Would, and we don't use it that much. Would a shake of powdered ginger, a shake or two work? I haven't done that. I know that the crystallized is a little bit sweeter. Here, Kelly, take a little bite. Ooh, really? What do we do yeah. the vibe? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, I see the difference. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, um, <coughs> I love it. It's almost like a little candy. Right. right. And so it is a little sweeter. But maybe, maybe the powdered ginger and a little bit of more sugar to add to it if you didn't have the, the, oh, yeah. We have the honey. yeah but i love that you still get a little bird yeah i was i was afraid to eat it because i've had ginger and it hurts <laughs> but, but with the sugar it's got just a sweet and a bite to it and i like i said i do keep it in the freezer mm -hmm. and it should keep it in the freezer indefinitely and you know even if you make the salad just a, a couple times a year, I would think in a couple years, because a, a tablespoon, you know, not it's quite a bit. So. Awesome. Any other questions that everybody has? Did Bradley go away? She must have. How much ginger are you supposed to use? Was that? I'm still here. I was doing my, I was doing my hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How much ginger? How much ginger, mom? He called for a tablespoon. Tablespoon. One tablespoon. In the salad, in the fruit salad, right? Yeah. Awesome. Other questions? I'm going to have to hop off, so I wanted to say bye. But bye, Grandma. Love you. Love you. Have a good day, sweetie. Love you.
Kelly, where are you going to post the video? I will post the video and the recipe um, on the, the Facebook event that I did. I can also uh, send out, I'll, it'll be on YouTube. The video will be on YouTube, uh, on the St. Thomas YouTube page. So you can access it anytime. And I will be sure that the recipes get out. I can send that, you know, out through the email through Breeze. And then I'll also um, put the recipe on the, the Facebook event. So that work for everybody? Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's been great. This was a blast. This great. Was so much fun to see everybody. You are. Um, I, I have a question for Carol before we yeah. leave. So your your stance at the governor's mansion. Yes. Was there any particular um, uh, interesting or um, kind of strange thing that ha would happen or? Um, oh. There's always something. And I really wasn't hired by the state of Kansas. They used me a lot. Mrs. Graves really didn't care to cook at all. And she had me up there a lot. Uh, Joan Finney liked to be in the kitchen. So I wasn't there very much. Mike Hayden's wife um, used me quite a bit. Her girls were young then. And I used to have to make them a few little fun things. And... Um, and then let's see, Kathleen Sebelius did enjoy being in the kitchen. Uh, one time I do remember there was a wild turkey that came through the glass downstairs where the security guards, <laughs> and the turkey had to be euthanized because it was all a mess. And it was quite terrifying with guests there. <laughs> the oh my and God. It, I don't, the governor's residence is way out on the acreage, and there's a lot of wildlife there. So that was one incident I remember. And it was did you cook him? No, I did not cook him. <laughs> <laughs> I did cook a lot of a wild game when Hayden was governor. He was a uh, loved to hunt, and he used to have some of his men friends in, and we and I learned how to cook a lot of things I wasn't really familiar with, but he had the right books. And um, it was a lot of fun, and, and Curry seemed to enjoy it. But um, yes, it was just it was just a lot of fun to get to go up there, and and um, I was there when the Graves adopted their their daughter, and I was there the day that they had her christened, and it's just it was. I have a lot of pictures of different events, but I had a lot a lot of good memories there. And when President Clinton uh, came. I think you had to make a bunch of cookies and things, didn't you? Yes. Oh, and then, um, Jer um, who's our, uh, I can't remember, our pre uh, president from uh, from Georgia. Oh, but Jimmy Carter. Carter, yes. And he came and they were, um, they were introducing the Dole, um, it's a building at KU. Uh-huh, yeah, the mm -hmm. business, yeah. Yes. They invited Carter as a guest, and he stayed at the governor's residence. That's when Sebelius was there. And I remember a lot of security catering. They had dogs all through my truck and my catering van. And, and years before this, a dear friend had gone to, um, I have the book now, what is the town where he grew up? Um, it's in- Plains, uh, Georgia. Pardon? Plains? Oh, Plains. That was it, thank you. And I had a little cookbook. And there are recipes in there from Roslyn and a lot of the Carter family. It's just a little church cookbook. Well, I made Grits, Roslyn Grits recipe out of that book. And when uh, President Carter came to thank me for my work and the food, he said, those grits taste like Roslyn. And I well, sir, they are her recipe. So I showed him the book, and he took the book with him back, and she ended up signing it and mailing it back to me. Plus, she oh. mailed me her autobiography and signed it. Wow. And so, so I had some wonderful experiences up there. It's just really been fun.
<laughs> Everybody was just cool. very kind and appreciative. That's cool. Well, thank you all so much. And unless anybody has more questions. Oh, hi, Allie. <laughs> It's good to see everybody. You're welcome to stay on if you've got more questions and welcome to hop off and go cook or be, uh, go about your day also. Thank you very much. Because um, I have an appointment at the Apple store. So you know how you have to pre those. So anyways, I really had a blast. Thank you all very much. <laughs> it was really good really to see you guys. Bye guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. What's your question, Debbie? So just on the cream, do I add it to the rice or do I add it into the salmon egg butter oh, mixture? I after I added the rice. Add to the rice. It goes in together. Right. The no, I know. Yeah. And then the cream. Okay, so add the rice to the mixture and then add the cream on top. Yeah. Yeah. So great. Yay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good to see everybody. Good to see you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Debbie. Good to see you. Thank you very much, everybody. Good to see you guys. Happy <laughs> yes. Easter. Happy Easter. We're going to watch the recording now because we're way behind. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll, get it. I'll get it up here as quick as I can. Thank you. It was so much fun. It has to render, but uh, I'll get it up as quick as I can. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>